Sounds quiet. Silent, maybe? Oh, shit. Thanks for coming. I know you, got, you're busy. you guys are probably both busy as fuck. We're yeah. going on tour on Monday. Okay. Um, Michael's been playing in my band. So we're going to go have a rehearsal after this. But, you nice. Know. And two days ago, we were just in Oceanside for, I'm playing in that African band, Witch. So we were just out in Oceanside hanging out while I put on Oh, I show. think, uh, was it a bowling alley? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were just playing that gig. I, so. saw, I saw a bunch of pictures of that. Yeah, it was Looked really fun. Cool. It was for that, like, Rowan Zarilla or Zarilla or something. Like cool. Some pro skater launched a new shoe, and he nice. really likes Witch, so he got us all to come out and play this bowling thing, which was fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you the only person with no headphones on? Are we going to do the headphones? Yeah, you sure. don't have to. It's, <laughs> totally, <laughs> it's totally an optional cool, cool. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to fit in. You're going to be the cool guy with no headphones? No, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> standing out that much. Uh, what the fuck? I, I feel like I don't know you. Well, I feel like I know you. I know you, but I don't know you like that well. Ask. A, ask. It tripped me out that you're Michael Ralt because <laughs> I listened to your album like for a long time. Oh, and I cool. came out and was really into it. Nice. And you look different. Did you? I mean, did you have a beard before? Or shorter I think hair cover, or something? I didn't have a beard before. On the cover of that record, I don't think I even had a mustache. And then I think I switched over to having a mustache at some point, and then I started not shaving at all. And now I just have a really shitty beard. Got it. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. I like something. I, if you di- didn't tell me your name, I would have not connected right. yeah, the dots yeah. at all. It's also like that was just like that record came out. All that come out, and then the photo got taken somewhere in the middle of that period of time. So even like that photo. It was even older than like when the record came out, so I yeah. feel like I'm just a lot younger on that photo than got I am it, now. Got it. A lot of life has happened. Huh? Yeah, exactly. He's a hardened old man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, how are you? I know you're busy as fuck, right? I mean, I, I feel like I'm, you're always playing or you're always somewhere else. Yeah, we were just talking about this yesterday about how that's what you have to do, and then we're like, maybe you don't have to do that, but hey, that's what we've always done, so that's yeah, what we'll just I mean, keep doing. I feel like that's what. <laughs> people have been doing since the beginning of time like beginning of music beginning of it seems of like though there's definitely like with the new can skin a cat as yeah. in true method to just get out there and be the traveling troubadour do you like music do you like doing that actually enjoy being gone and doing shit all the time or do you wish it was different um well, I definitely loved it all. Like I've been doing my first band that toured was like when I was like 18. So I've been doing it for like 10 years. So I have loved it and I still love it. I love playing. I've always loved performing, but the traveling part gets like just more exhausting as you get older. Not to say that like I'm old, obviously, but <laughs> I'm just like, okay, yeah, like we're going on tour on Monday. But I know once we're out there, there's like just always that like little bit of like dread right before where you're like, ah, oh, I got to pack. I got to like, get everything together. Um, but actually being out there and doing it is so fun. I never like the trends in life. I feel like when I'm at home, once I'm settled into home, it feels really good. And then when I have to go on tour, I feel like the transition back into touring feels really awkward and weird. Yeah. And then once you start touring, then it's like feels weird to come back home. I just yeah. feel like the yeah. transitions yeah. are always hard. Yeah. But. I feel that. Yeah. I feel like once you get comfortable in the one zone, then you, it's hard to go back. Yeah. 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 It's, what I miss traveling a lot is just the day. To, I feel like there's nothing to worry about when you're, it's just, you got to get to that place at that time. And totally. everything is just kind of leading up to that. Yeah, exactly. You know, <coughs> excuse me, you have like a lot of structure, which I feel like at home being a freelance, like musician kind of person who like takes on random gigs to make money when they're at home, you don't really know what your day to day is going to be, which is really like freeing. But then also like there's something nice to being like, okay, we got to wake up at this time and be at this place and do this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, what? Well, leg of- weird tour because we're supporting this girl named Alexandra Savior. And we already had confirmed this show that we're, is that the ice cream truck? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it comes at like two in the morning too. It's like an all day, oh. ice, all night. Ice cream. Oh, I wonder what they're selling. Nice. It is. We're going to be out of luck if you need yeah, ice cream. Yeah, no, it's great. But it's, to, is it even yeah. ice cream? Who knows? It might be popsicles. <laughs> or other things. Or no, popsicles. Yeah. Uh-huh. Popsicles. <laughs> I like that. Give me one of those. Um, so we had confirmed this <laughs> Valentine's Day Planned Parenthood show that um, is with like Mac DeMarco and Wiseblood and stuff on February 14th. So this girl's tour 
is um, she, there's a show that she already had in San Francisco on that date. So we're supporting her in Seattle and Portland. So we're just going to fly up there for those two shows oh, and then it. fly back so we don't have to drive yeah, so that's far way nicer. back. And it's, it is, but of course it's like, you know, definitely expensive. But I'm probably equally as expensive as driving there, honestly. Yeah, that's a long stretch of road. Exactly. And I've kind of, we've done the Northwest. We I felt like we neglected the Northwest for a long time and just did the Southwest. So it's kind of nice to keep going back there, but we've went there like two or three times in the fall. And I realized that like we drove all the way to Portland just to do a weekend of house shows. And it's so much driving and that's only to Portland, although it's not that much further to Seattle once you get up yeah, there. Yeah, true. Um, but so instead of trying to like race back down the coast to make it down for this February 14th show that's in LA, cause her February 14th show is in San Francisco. So they're not driving quite as much. Mm. So we're just gonna fly up there for the two shows, fly back, and then we'll do Valentine's Day at Terragram. Nice. Then we'll do the 15th at Pico Union. Have you been there? No. It's not far from here. Um, isn't that isn't that like a train station or something? It's a church. It's a church. Okay. Um, and I played there last year with Jackson Brown and wow, a bunch of people. It was so. I'm dropped there. Just God, have you ever heard of him, Jack? It's really all about Jackson. Did you Brown. hang out with him or anything? Yeah, I've got. I've met him a few times because. Um, Is he a nice dude? He's so nice. He's so sweet. Seems like he would be just like a fucking sweetheart. He's great. I love him. And I mean, I'm obviously a big fan. So. Yeah. Once before. And then, yeah, we go down to San Diego. So it's long. There's only Got like it. a few shows. but Okay. It's not like some six week. No. Pack up your whole life into a suitcase type of thing. Not at all. And that's probably why I'm not stressing, like not having to pack for six weeks. That won't long, start like until two, the two new days. record comes out. Yeah, exactly. And then back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. I can't do that anymore. Like, I don't. I, I have. I have. Res, I have a lot of respect for people that are fucking just out there doing it. Well, I also. I really do love traveling, so that's part of the thing. Like that, I get excited about. To but to go to a new place. Yeah. It's like. At this point in time, you just go to the same places. Like I remember on my last record cycle, definitely with my band. It's weird when you're in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the states, like some place you would never go to intentionally, and then you're like. Oh right, this is the Starbucks we went to like yeah. a month ago, yeah. and you're like, "We, well, I know this place, and yeah. that thing's over there." And you're like, "I <laughs> just know all these places way yeah. too well now." Yeah, it's always bad when like barista like knows you. Yeah, right. like, oh, fuck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. What um, what got you into music in the first place? Was it just like you were born and you just fucking love music, and it was one of those things where you, did you find it later on in life? No, I, I definitely years. knew very early on. I mean, I think my parents were saying I was like singing before I could even like really okay. talk. And so it was in your blood. My older sister was taking piano lessons and I was like four and I was like, I want to take piano lessons. They're like, well, if you still want to do it when you're five, then you can do it because <laughs> I think they just wanted to know. Of course. And so, yeah, I started piano lessons when I was five, which I should be way better, but I probably haven't practiced as much as I should have <laughs> and I also got really into musical theater so that was like my got it initial thing um and then I got in trouble in middle school and kind of got pushed out of the musical theater scene and that got me more into like rock got it smoking weed pretty much led you <laughs> to rock I mean it's a gateway drug yeah it for <laughs> sure is it's crazy um what what was it that I'm always curious what, I don't know if it's a specific band or person or f celebrity, what was it that clicked that was like, oh, fuck, this is, this is what I like. This is what turns me on musically. Like, what the fuck? How did I not know this? You know? I feel um, like there's always one thing or a few, a group of things. Well, I mean, I, my personal tastes have evolved a lot, but I feel like the thing that I remember getting most into, like, in high school I guess that separated me from my friends and made me think like, oh, I might have something like tastes that are different than the mainstream was getting into like Patsy Cline and Got that it. and Loretta Lynn and like old school country music. And my first band was very old school country, even older than that. We were kind of more going for like a Carter family type of thing. Got it. But that was like the thing that showed me that maybe I was going to be into making music and doing something different than like all my friends. Cause my friends in high school, I mean, I like to go to like, whatever cool bands were popular at the time, like yeah. concerts and stuff. But my friends were all really into like the strokes or whatever, yeah, yeah. which, you know, they're cool, but like that never really like did it for me. Got it. Got it. What about, I'm curious 
because you're from Canada. Were you born and raised there? Yeah, born in Edmonton, Alberta. Do you feel like it's much different? If you were raised here, would have you have become like a different person? Maybe. I mean, so I, if I was, I guess it would be. I probably would have had a similar experience of just being raised on music in a really intense way. But then at the same time. I mean, it's certainly, I think the biggest thing is just if you're in Edmonton, you're very isolated. I mean, the internet and stuff makes it so it's not that isolating. Calgary, like 14 hours east of Vancouver, yeah. and then five hours west of Saskatoon. That's like, you're not really like close <laughs> to shit. So I feel like that was like a big thing to overcome coming from there is just to like get to a place where you're, I mean, for me, it was like when I was 24, I burger and came down and had a visa, came to LA and kind of hung out in the scene a little bit. And it was all through but like got it, got it. you know it took a while just to get to the place where you just were meeting other people that were doing the same things you want to do when i lived in toronto there's people who liked what we were like what i was into and stuff too but it's not as much of like a scene there isn't got it, lollipop got it. and burger and stuff like that so it took me a while to just get down into the midst of people who are passionate about is that things. would you say that was more constructive having that or some you're displaced from it it almost makes the music better like it you can like you can it's inspiring because it's like oh, i'm so close yet so far away it might be and true i'm not connected but i am because the internet and i mean about edmonton it grew up in the same scene as us and then it was peter from home shake and myself sean nicholas savage and a handful of other people um but yeah there's something interesting about that Oh, Tops was also from a band from that scene that's done really well. Um, that's the thing. It's like that's like a very tight. Like that's cool because it's yeah. not a place you would think a lot of shits happening. Well, and we definitely all like knew e knew each other. Yeah, it was in Got high it. school, and like here you'd be, be in a band, and somebody else would have like a burn CD of being like, "Hey, have you heard these guys? They're from that." And then you find out later that that yeah. was like the band Sean was in, or like I knew Mac and Peter through family. Like so, I knew those kids guys since I was really yeah. friends until we were like met when we were For teenagers sure. and we're like oh we all like ma making music but yeah so i don't know there's something maybe to be said about we were like isolated so i guess that like like geographically but then also we're the maybe the first generation like when we were teenagers myspace and the internet and stuff happened yeah, so yeah. it was maybe the first generation where we were like also kind of aware of what For was sure. happening in all these other bigger cities so maybe that was a really great way to develop as artists i don't know oh for sure but MySpace something happened. was legendary yeah Totally. I mean, I remember and looking that at that. That shit was so sick. I actually like MySpace <laughs> more than Facebook still. I just remember looking at MySpace and hearing all the, I remember being like, every band that's popular in Edmonton right now that no one knows about outside of Edmonton, the same types of bands in every city I can listen to now. And I was yeah. like, that's crazy. Like, that was totally, Fuck. yeah. Yeah, that shit blew my mind. When yeah. you like this bass band that was from Kentucky or some shit, and it was like the coolest thing you've ever heard and you see all these pictures and like what the fuck's going on in Kentucky I feel like I'm somehow missed that like I definitely had a MySpace and used it to promote my own band but discovered any bands on when there. did you get on MySpace how old were you uh really early I was okay. an early adopter of all yeah, social yeah. medias got it because I had it. an older sister so she was like I was like way too young I don't even remember but like I don't know 12 or something yeah dang okay I mean if it was around then which I think it probably was because Facebook didn't came yeah, around like not that much later than that honestly yeah MySpace I feel like Facebook definitely stole MySpace's glory oh, yeah. do you guys remember know. Friendster yeah yeah course. like I was even on Friendster wow I was on that was really like, short-lived <laughs> yeah Friendster was, they started it all really but in Alberta there was a thing called Nexopia that didn't exist anywhere besides this our one province that was before I don't know Nexopia Nexopia was a similar con it was weirder that like you rated people's photos and stuff and then oh, if you shit. got enough good votes you would get on this like top five list and then you get tons of messages and stuff it so was it's always just like, like that's more of like a way kind of thing or yeah you, or is it like the profile like had a little bit of coolness? information it's weird it's a weird concept but it was before facebook and i don't know i never had friends there so i don't know what the timeline was but it was weird because it was only very specific geographically but then it was like then that died down and then MySpace came out and I was like, oh, this is sort of the same thing, but like On really yeah. Larger big. Scale. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I miss that. I thought MySpace, I still think MySpace is cooler. The fact that you can and have right. like a Much playlist more personalized. and all this cool shit. And Facebook came out. I was like, oh, it's just a picture and it's just text. And everything's gray. Yeah, everything's gray. What the <laughs> fuck? This isn't fun. 
that's how they're like homogenizing us all. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, you're all just gray people <laughs> to have colors. I feel like the, I feel like it was just different than MySpace. Right. They and were like, what's the was, anti? I seriously think that's what it was. And well, it's, it seems to have worked. Yeah. <laughs> seems right. Right. Which is a crazy thing, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm on a stick of all social media personally. Yeah. And like, I know how important it is. I think it's very important. And I think I've built my own like fan base, but it definitely I know like, what you mean. takes away from the joy of just creating, especially like, cause I like to do photo stuff and like be in photos and stuff, but then it becomes all about like making photos that are going to be seen on Instagram. And I'm like, what about just like the art of like creating cool visual stuff? That's not like, maybe it's not going to get a lot of likes cause the algorithm doesn't. Yeah. I also just don't yeah. like the yeah. down. Like when it was Instagram was just like, when it was just like your feed was everyone you followed and you reached. Yeah. That audience. was the best. Yeah. I mean, why that's why it chronological. That? Yeah, why did, why, like, I guess money and all that shit. They changed, changed it for it, money, yeah. I mean, for, like, being able to, now it's like you have to pay to reach your audience or whatever, which so is, fucked, like. so fucked, man. I don't get that. It doesn't even work. It, yeah, it doesn't work. It's, like. Unless, it's, I mean, I've never tried to put in some, put a, a dollar for every follower you have, that that equating your content. A dollar for every follower. I mean, so if you, had, if you had 10,000. It's pay ten thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of cash. That's what I'm saying. Isn't that fucked? <laughs> ten thousand dollars to have every one of the fan base people fall. You that's know, the thing. It's like not really helpful for independent artists. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. That was like base and early Instagram, I guess, and it, like that you were like suddenly just it was that feeling of being like, wait, everybody's totally connected. Every community, independent music community in every city, each other now, and it's not yeah. really like that anymore. It seems yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, it's too bad. I remember. Been, I felt like it happened in a week or something. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? How come no one's seeing anything? Yeah, no. How come yeah, this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, what totally. the fuck just happened? But it's been like a long decline where then people will start to figure out, okay, like this is how you work around these new changes and then they make a whole bunch of new changes. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. well, I can't constantly be, I mean, I guess it's some people's jobs, like social media managers or whatever, like having yeah. to constantly stay on top of that. That seems very people who do it, but the job itself seems very soulless to me because you're basically just it's like, I mean, we're artists, we're creating art, so we're looking at it differently, but like that's just purely marketing and like how can we appeal to the most people and then yeah. you kind of lose the joy of creation. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking a lot, I mean, a lot of people I know that are, are creatives or whatever you want to call them, they'll actually unfollow everybody and just post. So they don't actually have a feed. Oh. Right. Um, and when you go, you actually don't see anything. Um, but well, you're, yeah, what does that look like? It's just blank. I think it's just blank. <laughs> I, I don't know. But it probably has a button saying like follow some people. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. Exactly. Page, yeah. <laughs> and some people say that's like really gr has been great for them, just mentally to not have to be great sucked into uh, you know, the swiping. Well, I mean, I totally have done like I'm embarrassed to even admit this, but I think probably I would not be the only person to say like you just like you're sitting on your phone, you like open the app, you scroll through it, then you close it, and like two seconds later you like open it again. You're like, what am I of doing? Course. I literally yeah, just yeah. looked at this. You it's all the, the same shit. Yeah, you, you look at the time, you're like, it's been an hour. What the fuck have I done? Does that Mental health, to me? but it's bad for uh, your algorithms. I, I actually, I like, from, I, I don't really like, seek this out. I don't even know why I know this, but I talked to somebody once who knows about this stuff, and they were like engaging and following people and liking other people's posts uh, will increase okay. your sense. because they want you to stay they want you to be that makes sense yeah but i mean Fuck. whatever <laughs> should probably just unfollow everybody if it, if it is better for your mental health than just let the algorithms yeah. do their own thing i just noticed a lot of people doing it lately and yeah I'm like oh that's kind of never thought of that i mean it would just be cool it wasn't like payola pay to play it's like we're Oh, like they're streaming like radio. It's not like the same. Like you have this new thing, but it's, I mean, I hope the, the heads back at Spotify don't hear me saying this, but it's like it ultimately <laughs> just comes down to like a few small people who decide what everyone gets to listen to. Yeah. And social media was this cool way of actually connecting directly with your fans. And now yeah. they're making that difficult. And it's just hard for people to hear the music they want to hear or like find out about it. Yeah, I guess it's easy to hear it if you know about you find out about it for sure. And then I mean, there are some platforms like SoundCloud, and that are still pretty organic. Organic, yeah. That's but, true. I, but I feel like it's not. They, they don't. It's not like Spotify where you can listen to everything. It's mm. very select, and you have to make sure it's uploaded on your own. And there's probably bands that 
aren't on Bandcamp and well, yeah. And how do you? That. I mean, aside from it on your own social media, how do you promote your Bandcamp? Yeah, camp? You're there's right. no social element to Bandcamp. Well, there is sort of the comments and the like people favorite things and comment them and stuff. And yeah, then that's people cool. like pay attention to other listeners. It's very independent that there are people seeking things out on there, and then well, that does create other interests. It is cool. Yeah. I mean, there's still some there's slivers of hope. I feel like yeah, yeah. Band I mean, SoundCloud, SoundCloud, SoundCloud for sure seems it's like free. it's kind of more for. I think they recently changed their formatting a little bit to make it so it's not so easy to, it's not as free. Like oh, now yeah. you have a limited amount of sp upload space. So you oh, can only okay. have so much on your, but they just did this. And I think there was some uproar and then they actually like reversed some of the things because people were so upset. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know because I haven't actually dug that deeply into it. But from what I can tell, it's like SoundCloud is really good for a certain type of music. Got but it. I don't know yeah. how much yeah. of like what we're kind of doing is going on on there. I'm sure it's on there. And I'm sure if you connected and got into it, you'd be able to find it. But yeah. I always hear about like SoundCloud rappers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, where's the SoundCloud like for pop people? <laughs> Come find me. <laughs> Maybe there'll just be a different. I, I think at some point there's just going to be a platform that just destroys. There's no, there's no anything. I really think something's going to happen one of these days where it's just like it used to be before all the pay to see your shit thing exactly. well i mean instagram came out when facebook was kind of like getting annoying and then everyone was like this is better and then facebook bought it and then it started yeah. to get annoying so i feel like yeah facebook another would thing just buy it buy it and then another hopefully i mean hopefully new things yeah. keep coming up i guess there's no real his, like we don't have any well, historical reference there are haven't new ever been platforms like for example tiktok but i've never used that i don't know yeah. and like snapchat i feel like i kind of like fell off after instagram i was just like i don't know if i want for to sure. be a part of something else is it tiktok like a karaoke thing that's what i was told i have no idea pretty sure <laughs> like you can sing along to it but that's they cool. like I mean, take photos and video. i think that's what tiktok is someone was telling know. me about it the other day who was it? i can't remember but they were saying they were talking to like a 13 year old about it. And that's like, and they were like, oh, I used to do that. I'm like, oh my God, it's old news already. <laughs> I don't know what the kids are up to. Well, yeah, I guess you can actually upload your music to TikTok. I don't, I don't really know. You need to be more with the times, I think. Or not. Or just don't get with the times. <laughs> be without the times. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Timeless. Within, without the times. <laughs> yeah, I still like, do you, do you listen to records and tapes still? Like, are you still, or do you catch yourself mostly? I do. I'm so like transient. Like I don't. Yeah, have, whatever you can listen. I don't have my own space right now where everything's set up. So Got like it. my records aren't all in one place and aren't all listenable. So I have things to Spotify and, yeah. and YouTube and everything. But I would prefer to have my entire record collection yeah. in one place with a great sound system and everything like that. When I do have that, that's how I listen to music. But yeah. Sometimes you like gotta it. sacrifice things. Yeah, it's definitely more of a. Like when I come in here in the in the office, all it's more like a ritual thing where you have to get the record going and make sure it's you know the needles there and you're around to flip it when it's done. Yeah, yeah. I like I like that shit totally. Well, that's more like active listening. Not to say that you can't become passive while you're listening to it, but like the fact that you actually have to like maybe at one point get up and flip the record and stuff. It's like much more engaged than just the background music element, which is another thing that Michael and I have talked about a lot. Like this playlist culture of people just putting music on in the, in the background, which is, that's great and fine, and I totally do that too, but then everyone's trying to buy, buy to get on these playlists. And it's kind of like, I would rather personally connect with people who are actively listening to my music and wanting to hear it than yeah, for just sure. be like someone's background music. I'll be that too, but. <laughs> do you think that even since probably I mean, um, actually, you could probably go back when they were making compilation records. I feel like people always are drawn to an easy way to listen to as much stuff as possible, whether it's compilation records or mixtapes, like in the 80s and 90s. It's basically just regurgitation of that, I think, just in a digital format. Well, and that's cool. And I do actually, like, at sometimes I search the Spotify algorithm that says you might like these artists too. And like, sometimes I do. And that's it's a cool pretty way good. to find yeah. out about stuff. It's actually a pretty good algorithm. But yeah. I also <laughs> yeah, think it yeah. that it kind of makes everyone listen to the same stuff. Oh, it totally does. Which I mean, is kind of cool because you can like talk about it with your friends, but sometimes you want to like find stuff yourself. There's like a yeah. joy of digging. I love to dig whether it's for records or just like online. There's, there's times I put in in the search 
bar on Spotify. Like, like, um, there's actually a playlist called Sophisticated 80s Mop or something. Very, it's very specific. And that, and I was turned on to, a, to all this shit I didn't know about. So I feel like if you got if you got weird weird words like uh, I don't know, prickly punk from <laughs> Tunisia, nineteen seventy nine. There would be something. Is that a Spotify playlist or a playlist made by a person? I don't remember. It was just there. I remember putting in sophisticated or like minimal pop music, something, and it just showed up, and it was this huge playlist. And well, that's never that you say that because like now maybe I'll look up like. 70s LA country rock and like maybe I'll find a great playlist yeah. made by just a random person. Yeah, that's the thing. They're actually the ones that are made. You get the fucking, you know, nerd on a very specific thing. Not mm-hmm. just a robot on an album. Yeah, and there's like a really a lot of shit that I learned from a few like minimalists from all generations and there's a bunch oh, of cool, cool shit in it. I don't know hating for spotify but i think there's some i mean it gets it's like good it's like yin and yang you know it's like it's good and bad I mean, at the same time as a about, listener I that's like what it. i was gonna say yeah. as a music listener i've always said like they you can't beat that user experience so like if you can't beat because i like listening to music on spotify because i think that they've figured out a very easy way to make it happen but you don't want to lose the organic side of it's kind of funny. Yeah. It's like, I'd like to be paid more for it as a musician, but I also don't want to pay more for it as a listener. <laughs> yeah. You're like, which one am I going to go with? Yeah. That's yeah, a weird, uh, man. The people that, the CEOs or whoever the big heads are at Spotify must be, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Just crazy shit going on and how thick, how fast everything's changed. I feel like it just popped up in the last three years. It's, it's just kind of like changed the entire industry. Yeah. I the guess. landscape of, yeah, it's music. totally different now. I told people recently, it's come up a couple of times that like put out the burger record. That was like my first time releasing something internationally. And it was like, you know, maybe a bit more internet age than the first record that I put out. And so I was like, kind of like used to how records, I thought I was used to how records are released. And so I was like, oh yeah, you know, I've done this process before. And then we put out my last on Wick and another international thing on a American label. And it was just like how much the playlist thing had become like a big part of the conversation was completely different than the last one, just like a two and a half or three year difference. And I was like, whoa, it just feels like it's a completely different world all of a sudden, which is cool. But I was like, just surprised how much it was not the same. Like things are changing. Keep going. Mm -hmm. I don't don't think anyone can wrap their head around it. (laughs) I think that's what I mean. I wonder if they can. I wonder if the people at Spotify, I don't know. Yeah, I must right. I don't think, I mean, maybe some people plan for world domination, but like going back to like Facebook or whatever and like having watched like the social network or, you know, oh, yeah, movies the like that. Like, I don't think that they really plan. I don't yeah, know that hap- anyone can yeah. plan to make something that big. Yeah. Like, I think it just becomes something beyond you at a certain point. Like, probably, I was like, this is like, this is the biggest thing in the world now. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I think maybe with the app world, they're shooting for that. But I mean, there's no way to. It's just like with music too. It's like you look at somebody who's blown up and got super successful. And I think just the little bit that I've been around, massive success. Like certainly, I've been impressed by some people's ability to plan and ability to be like strategize. But at the same time, I think it's also kind of like things started to go really well, and then we tried to maximize it. But like, how did it go really well in the first place? And it's like, I don't know, man. It just weird stuff happens. I don't know. Yeah. That's kind of when the best shit happens. I think probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the, yeah, exactly. You can't plan. Yeah. It just happens. Yeah. It just, just happens. (laughs) Um, is there any, I always ask people, fellow, I don't don't know what to say. Music, uh, songwriters, people playing music all of the above i'd say whatever yeah. i'd like to um think of ever, myself as all of those things <laughs> have you ever was there ever a time where you question just throwing in the towel or questioned why you do it has, has it ever beaten you down to such a pulp to where you're questioning yes why you're spending your time doing what you're doing yeah um i think that's like a multi-layered question yes um sometimes because of the beat down of the industry and feeling like it's really hard but other times I've definitely like I wrote um a song on my last record called only in America on like a 
mushroom trip in Death Valley. And Dang. part of the audience was having this like existential crisis of like, maybe I shouldn't do music at all. Maybe like doing music as a professional pursuit is like an ego thing. And maybe I should like join the Peace Corps. <laughs> but then when I like came down, I was like, no, I'm put. <laughs> Really, like where I'm going to make the most impact. That's yeah, it's yeah. a good thing I didn't start writing emails while I was high on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get me out of my contracts. No, I was, I realized, <laughs> I think person doing it for the right reasons. I love making music. It's my passion. And I also feel like that's like where I'm going to make the most difference in the world to other people. Yeah. So on that note, then also, you know, you go through this rigmarole of the album cycle over and over again. Sometimes you're just like, why am I doing I came the closest yeah. <laughs> I've ever come to quitting. The end of oh, the, like, at the end of the last record cycle, I was like, it was, and in retrospect, it was actually quite a successful thing. And like, I had a lot of reasons to be optimistic, but a lot of things changed. And I kind of just hit this point where I was like, my band wasn't going to be the same band anymore. <clears throat> like I wasn't really. And I split with my management at the time. And I just kind of had this moment of being like, is this insane? Like, cause it is insane. It yeah. is insane to spend as much time as I did. I have spent on yeah. the road yeah. and, and like have not very substantial, like normal life at a certain age. You're like, this is kind of crazy. And I think it's, I think any sane person would consider like For the sure. reason of being like, maybe this maybe is it's insane. Time I go back to like, I don't even know. Back to square one. There, well, I have no. back to yeah. square one. Cause I'm like, I've, you know, I went to music school. Like I've studied music my whole life. That's like, what I know how to yeah. do. I could do a couple other things, hobnob in some other <laughs> areas, but like, I don't know. I've kind of spent my whole life doing this. So I'm what else I would do. working really hard at being a band leader and a songwriter and a yeah. musician. So it's just like thinking else at this point in time is honestly like, yeah, if you'd feel like you'd be, you're giving up, I'd be going to first year at university for something. I yeah. would just be pretty much like, okay, well I'm going to go take, whatever i don't yeah. even have something else that it's a passionate yeah. enough thing that i could be like oh well i've always wanted to do that That's it's a, like and i and it, the other things yeah. i'd be passionate about would be like oh maybe i'll be a filmmaker or something and then fast forward 15 years and i'm still like not financially <laughs> stable yeah. and i'm like this is a terrible idea i feel you man I I, i'm in the I feel the exact same way i don't i don't know there's times where i'll literally just i don't know i get i i almost question every day one of those types um but i'll I'll go to uh, thinking of what it would be like if I was like a, a healthcare physician and living this very straight laced Ooh. life in town somewhere. And I'll look up like, I'll, I'll sit and like write it all out and like just have this grand plan I'm gonna become a normal person. And then the next day I'll wake up and be like, what the fuck? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Yeah, so well, I, I, I don't mean, know if you, I, the sometimes death I, from yeah. medical school would be yeah, it'd be insane. Yeah, it's it'd like you insane. you honestly can't do or that. Some, sometime, Maybe you could not to you know. I don't want to shut you down and your no, normal no. life pursuit. No, there's times <laughs> I thought of opening up like a like a little snow cone. Oh, that's cute. Truck at the in, at the beach in Florida or something, and just like living in a little hut and just selling do snow cones. Do the banana cones. stand kind of thing. <laughs> no, just call it off, change my name, just fuck, just new identity fully. Just like never touch Plastic an instrument surgery. again. Someone's hard. No, no. <laughs> no, not me. You must like, be. You must be yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I just, it's just hard. It's it's not. It's part of career paths, quote unquote. That really is just. There's no straight road. There's no. I can't even see a foot in front of me. At least. And you can't really experience. try to follow. Like I feel like people are always like, "Well, what did they do? What did they do? I'll do what they did." It's like yeah, everyone has their own path and differently for everyone. Yeah. So you kind of have to make your own game plan yeah and more and more i mean i've just realized that like ultimately you're just gonna live for as long as you live you're just gonna be on this plane for a while and you just kind of have to be like okay well i like making music and somehow i've managed to av like avoid having a real job and put a lot of my time into making records and That's i think cool. i've made better and better records so it's like i'm probably doing that yeah maybe one of them will blow up at some point in time yeah maybe not i don't know but it's just like i can't really think of anything else better you. to do <laughs> like we're here having this conversation because we're all in a place where we've like gotten somewhere we clearly have people that are out there that want to hear what we're doing and we want to keep doing that for those people and i think inevitably it will continue to grow we have no idea to see into the future of 
what that's going to look like, but yeah, it will go mean. somewhere. There's no, <laughs> I feel like the, I don't know if it's the same in Canada, but at least I, I grew up in the early, in the nineties and it was classic. You go to college, you do this and you mm-hmm. do that. And then every, it's like this very, like you just, even if you were making music, you try to get signed to a major label and that there was like, yeah, it, true. It, and well, that's just been cr- yeah. smashed. And I mean, yeah. A lot of those status quo paths are like not really there. I guess I don't know because yeah. I'm not living in a more normal life, but I feel like I hear people saying that it's like. Yeah, it still does. Things that seemed like guaranteed paths to like a regular middle class lifestyle don't really exist as much in a lot yeah. of places, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Especially at, in areas like this. It's there's so much competition and it's, it's sprawling and it's fucking insane. Well, I definitely think like the future that was being laid out for us as kids in like the nineties has changed a lot. And yeah, there was like some sort of promise of middle-class security and that seems to be shrinking. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens in the election and in the future. Yeah, of there's the a world. lot of moving parts. Exactly. Like, I mean, things have changed a lot, but who knows how it's going to yeah. all play out in the end. Hopefully I always, well. uh, <laughs> the only thing is, and I do much anymore. I, I did more like in the last two years, but, it's like if you aren't happy, if you're not happy doing what you do, then you can't provide any sort of anything for anybody. Mm-hmm. Like you're just doing the world a disservice if you're not happy just yeah. on your own. So if this is what, th- you know, this, be, you, you know, what you guys do makes you happy, then that's all, that's the best gift you could give the world. It's, that's, True. that's like the number, the, you know, the string of, of hope and, being able to provide something to somebody somewhere. The so. place where it gets complicated though is like, you like doing something. Like after I almost quit ma- making music, I made I heard that I'm almost done fully just because I was like, I, suddenly I'm making really, I didn't decide I was gonna make another record. I just like, yeah, like just making happened. this and I'm doing yeah. it. But then you have to decide. How, then there's things that you have to do potentially to keep doing the thing that you like doing but you don't maybe like doing them. So it's like how much are you yeah. going to give away as a sacrifice for potentially some doing the sacrifice and do things that you don't like doing. Of course. And then sometimes you find yourself in places where you want to quit music because you're like so burnt out on doing of stuff course, that you yeah. didn't really But yeah, I mean, the making music part, there's no question. That yeah. That's the part we all love. It's like the figuring out how to yeah, make money. The sacrifices. Like, yeah, exactly. I Someone, day, and I, I'm not repeating this as fact, but it was an interesting thought where they're like being a musician is one of the most selfless things you can do because you basically like leave your whole life behind you to go out on the road and bring of course there's a part of it that's like you like doing that and you're like getting something out of the experience as well it's both yeah i mean well you know life is very selfish i mean even bring it some sort of joy i mean they would i don't think a successful brain surgeon would be doing their job if there wasn't any sense of joy or the yes, joy might be purpose. making that crazy amount of money too, but true. But yeah. if that's their, jo- I mean, if that's what makes them happy and they're able to be like a, a, an upright citizen, able to yeah. give positive energy and connect with doing positive things, I don't know. Then true. that's something. Ramdas has the best thing I can do for you is work on myself, and the best thing you can do for me is work on yourself. So I think, but even though there's all this other stuff that comes with it that isn't as fun, like like you said, that's the only way you're gonna like be. That's yeah, not gonna, and that's selfish. Yeah, and it's not gonna like. There's not gonna be a back and forth of positive energy being given and received. For sure. Yeah, and I think we've all probably just from making music as long as all three of us have have received messages from like fans randomly just being like yes. this song and this album. I just got a message from somebody actually about MySpace, and he was talking about oh, stuff really? that's <laughs> not available on the internet anymore about wow. specific songs that wow. I wrote when I was like 18 or whatever. Holy shit! But like. Even when it's more current or old or whatever, it's just like you get those messages where you're like, well, in a really small way, somebody got the feeling that I had when yeah. I made that. I think like in the music industry, even massive success sometimes isn't really based. If you, yeah. uh, there's like little moments where people really actually connected with you and like maybe got a little bit of a buzz off of something yeah. that gave you a buzz. And like that is, I think that's like, I mean, I wouldn't have been drawn to music if it wasn't for getting that feeling off of other oh, people's sure. records. That's and like the biggest pat on the Totally. Yeah, it's like, keep doing it, buddy. Yeah, and it also made me, also like, <laughs> and getting that buzz off people's records also made it so I could like get through going to high school and doing a bunch of stuff that yeah. I was like, when I was maybe in a mindset of being like, I don't really identify with a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. I don't really feel anything. And then like hearing records and being like, I like that. And then yeah. 
just that was like that was like the lifestyle for me. So I mean, other people getting that, I guess it's all very that's important. I guess I feel Fuck like yeah. that's like I want to make people feel the way that I feel when I listen to like a Christine McVie song, where I'm like. I Got that's it. exactly what I was saying but you put it into words and with this beautiful melody and like it makes you feel less yeah. and I know there's people out there this is the thing that's hard when you are struggling to like get your music heard it's like because you want to be successful and you want people to give you attention it's like I want to bring that feeling to other people I know there's people out there who want that and who are looking for it but like there's a disconnect because if it's not being placed on the right playlist or on the right radio stations or whatever like it's going to be hard for them to find it yeah. so All that it's like you want a sense of feeling connected or like community or whatever and like it's hard entertained by so many digital instantaneous uh entertainment forms yeah that if you go back to the 60s or 70s obviously like there's big bands playing that are being drawn by mass media but there was also just more free time that you were trying to find some sort of entertainment mm -hmm. so it would also be like oh there's just a, like there's a band that's really popular in this neighborhood who plays at this bar and you could yeah. be that band and not be massively successful and get that feeling of like having people oh, yeah. feel connected yeah, to you for sure. whereas like i think nowadays it's more and more like if you're at a show that has a lot of people at it it probably like there's some social media or some like there's very much less just like oh this is the band that yeah. plays at this bar that of actually course, has a following yeah. it's yeah. not they're not going to be huge but like it's less word of mouth. we need to like in order to feel that connection through making something you kind of have to try to succeed in all these other I games know, right. to some degree but i think that's why this podcast and like what you guys are doing is so cool because like you're making a scene and you're bringing people into it and then there's that's like a way for people to find out about the artists they want to know about is like connecting with other groups of people that it's like okay I like lollipop records like what's going on in that world and like what's on the periphery of that world and you know it kind of a, gives people a starting point so we're trying to do I think that's you're doing the goal. it that's the cast that's the goal with I mean everything every single thing we do but yeah it's just I don't know it's it's such a like music is such a thing like you have you really other people like it's not a completely solitary thing like you know um swimming or or like these maybe other, even like painting yeah i mean you you have people even if you were just yourself playing on a stage you need at least a, someone to watch for it to have happened it's like if you play yeah. in a room that's empty then not nah, you play i don't know <laughs> there's no, you know it's like did, if, if a tree, tree fell <laughs> i right? bet you need <laughs> You I think also that it's like, even if you make a record 100% by yourself, you need to play it to other people and like, yeah, to like get a buzz. Like at a certain point, so disconnected well, from then, everybody. Then and then you show up and you selfish. get excited about it again. If it's only yeah. like, I mean, it's weird because it's like, is it selfish or is it selfless if you just make it for yourself? But it's like, ultimately like it's meant to be shared. Yes, exactly. It's uh, I literally like, is auditory food. Yeah. It's like food eaten and it's meant to be eaten by people like yeah. everything is eating everything yeah, on this you planet imagine, eats and let's could like, you imagine being a chef and just making these crazy music you're done just there. like throwing it in the garbage or yeah, something like that's, it's like i'm not gonna give this to anybody it's, exactly it's like how that doesn't it just doesn't you don't ever see that no yeah it's crazy well, that's and the music joy of is the life same. and connection we're community beings we're not meant to be solitary we have made yeah. tribes for ourselves yeah. throughout history yeah i, I feel like sometimes that goes unheard and it at least i i only can really experience but there's times i've hated especially in the city where it's there's so many people and there's it's so entertainment heavy there's times i felt like i really don't have any friends or anybody that cares or is wanting to do anything i've had those feelings where it's like and that's just fucked i don't know like to me that new lollipop records that maybe want to do more shit to just kind of tie the tie things to, i don't know yeah i guess just create a sense of community or something i, feel, I feel like, like it lacks a lot i feel like pearl is such a connector of different people that it's been really cool for me to move from montreal to being down here more often and hanging around with her there's like a definitely a scene of people who are like actually friends who are all interested in the same stuff which is yeah, I totally know what you It's just, sorry to interrupt you, but it's just like anywhere. It's like, uh, we're all a bunch of misfits and we found 
we were like on the periphery of all of our scenes and we we're like god i wish there were some more people who like got us and then like now we're getting into our 30s and you know it's like we're finding those people and we're making that scene and we're building it you're not even in your 30s yet i'm 28 <laughs> same <laughs> I'm 31. Just turned, right? That's right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> just turned it. So, you were, yeah. so you were uh, 80, 89. 89. Okay. Yeah. I'm an 80s kid. I there mean, you go. not really, actually. Fuck, I always wish I could be 89. I'm 91. Oh, Me yeah. too. So I was like, God damn it. The 80s so is my I'm like, if I could have just said nine, Then you get to say I, I was part of it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm really not. <laughs> Yeah, you had a whole year. You're in January, so you know. Yeah, I had a whole you year. You remember that year too? Oh, that's right? legit. Eighty nine. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of shit happening in eighty nine. <laughs> in nineteen ninety two, a lot of shit. That's a crazy ass time. Isn't it like the Berlin Wall in eighty nine? Yeah, I think so. the whole grunge thing popped through in like ninety ninety one. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's like pictures of like Nirvana in like eighty nine when they yeah. had a different lineup or whatever. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Crazy shit. Yeah. You know the other. Th- uh, the other thing that I think about all the time is a lot of what's going on with music, especially guitar music, is mm-hmm. regurgitation. Yep. I'm really curious. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like maybe it's just I'm thinking that way because I'm being one-sided, but it's really... I don't know any bands that are like literally doing something so crazy that it's like seeing a new color, defined I mean, that's genre... Like- like ben, I know. do feel like it's like at this point in time, everybody's referencing something. It yeah. uh, sometimes makes me laugh when you see a press report on somebody who's like, for like my music, they might be kind of like, oh, well, it's just this. It's just guitar rock or whatever. And then they're like, but this is really futuristic. And I listen to it. And I'm like, it sounds like like certain pockets of the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Like it's really not like even yeah. when it's like, oh, it's crazy experimental, like new wave electronic stuff. You're like, like Devo or like, like it's like oftentimes yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. there's certain bands yeah, that existed is. 30 years ago. So it's like really... I, I don't know. For me, I more and more see it as like it's not really about creating something new. I mean, language, music, all these things that we've developed as humans, it's like we've developed these systems and now we all, unless we're going to completely wipe out the system and try something like invent a different <laughs> scale or like yeah. embrace different like half yeah. like step tones and stuff, a quarter, like you're pretty much a little system and you're kind of like you're going to be attracted to certain energies of like certain bands. And then you're going to be like a continuation of that energy. Yeah. And it seems sort of trivial at first, especially in a time when you're like, everything's so accessible. We can find all the original records that you're inspired by on Spotify. We can find everything. But at the same time, I think if people don't do it right now, it will become like, it'll start to die out. Like, yeah. as even though like influenced by a really huge band from the 60s or whatever, it's like only so many generations before, if nobody was going to keep doing that sort of vibe, anymore yeah and maybe it's on spotify but they're not going to search for it yeah, and that's like sure or it's on some <laughs> but i think you kind of have to carry it for it i think it's more important than people maybe give it credit for yeah i agree lewis pesikoff the guy who produced my album was saying that he thinks there's like a lot of weight being put on like novelty or something to be different just for the sake of being different and that it's kind of about more about finding your in the genre that you want to yeah pursue like guitar music obviously is like a wide one but it's like yeah do you want to <laughs> like i said like 70s country rock or do you want to do like 80s new wave or whatever it's like and then you kind of like draw on different elements and inevitably it's going to be unique when you put your own voice and your own spin on it yeah and i think that's kind of the most important thing instead of just trying to create something new that's different for the sake of being like this is its own yeah thing. yeah and it, it's that's fatty i feel like a lot of that stuff too it I feel like even the bands are, were to do that would it would be cool and they would just fizzle away. Exactly. Like w- you want to make new, you want to make like eternal. And like yeah, you think about you a go. really good That's drummer, good- feel like like a certain like beat that you've heard a million times, but he's got a really good pocket. Yeah, just and you hear good. it and you're like, is there anything new about it's just the exact vibe that I want to hear? That's yeah. like where I want to live all the time. Yeah. I just want to be there. So- all- That's cool. Shit. There's t- <laughs> there's times i've thought about like creating my own language and making songs in a completely different language and like sugar and like vocoder alien voices and fucking like making alien rock that's cool too (laughs) i mean do it (laughs) yeah it's just but no it's all it's it's just a thought and then i end up like (laughs) "Eh, then you're like that's still a lot of work yeah it's a lot of work for (laughs) 
I'm not sure what. <laughs> There's also something to be said for like music kind of comes from a place that isn't a hundred percent intellectualized. I think like, I mean, you can be, but I think for me, I'd like, it's a feeling thing. And so like, I'll come up with maybe an idea like that. That's very intellectual. And I'll be like, Oh wow, this is like such an interesting idea. And then I'll like, get on a guitar or an instrument and I'm like, Fuck I just that. kind of feel this, <laughs> yeah. man. This feels cool. And you're like, well, that's that kind of isn't really a crazy, wild outside idea. And you're like, really yeah. feels good. I, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if it's the same for you. I feel like why I personally like music is that it turns off what's happening up here. Mm -hmm. And it's more like just things happening in here. Yeah, it's like, it's like a meditation switch. for sure. Yeah, it's like off and yeah. just kind of letting your... Just being Energy. in the moment, and that's yeah. like kind of what life is about being present. It's kind of hard to do that, and playing music 100% takes you to that place, and it's the best. It's, yeah, how do you be in the moment when you're, especially when you're playing with somebody else? I mean, you have to be. There's, you, I'm more and you more, know, it's intense. As I get more and more sensitive to how I want things to be played, like on my records and stuff, like I more and more realize that like any moment that I'm thinking beyond just whatever amount of brain activity is necessary to like move my fingers on a keyboard or on a guitar is like a little bit off of the feel. Cause yeah. I'm not, a, a, it kind of takes all of my like whatever processing power be on it. Of course. And if I start thinking about like, Oh wait, did I do that thing where I was supposed to send that guy out that thing about taxes or whatever? <laughs> it's like, if I listen back, I'm like, that wasn't as good. You didn't yeah. play as well on that. Exactly. Moment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like a hundred percent there. It's, it comes yeah. across. For sure, especially with the people you're playing with too. There's times like uh, if you're jamming with somebody, like you can catch thing. Totally, it's almost and impossible it <laughs> to because for an entire song, I think it's almost like you just improve the amount that you're like focused from well, it's throughout your life. Similar I guess. to yeah. actual meditation, where it's like you're gonna have other thoughts come into your mind, but how effectively are you able to push those aside for the moment? Yeah, and maybe yeah. there's absolute masters who are maybe that's what like legendary greatness is. Yeah, that's people like who. 100% in it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How much do you think is like drug and do? I mean, certainly you all know, this. Most I of the like, <laughs> that a lot of the time. <laughs> I think of like if you were jamming, if, you, if you're like in a room, a jam, I feel like he'd be, I don't know. Well, he was definitely on acid. He definitely so. <laughs> was on a different, like, you know. On a Stevie different Wonder is like level. one of the only people I can think who has like that deep vibe that as far as I know, he didn't do a lot of drugs, but maybe yeah. he was smoking weed. I don't know. I know that there's the famous like John Lennon and George, uh, sorry, John Lennon and Paul McCartney are jamming with him. I haven't listened to it, but people have told me about this. And apparently at one point you hear John Lennon offer him some Coke and Stevie turns it down. So I'm assuming that he wasn't a big Coke head, but maybe he was doing other stuff. I don't know. Interesting. I feel like of all drugs, cocaine is probably like the least one to actually get you out of your head but people have used yeah. it people yeah. have used it a lot to make some cool music though i'd say that's true <laughs> but it's just I, but I, but <laughs> I, I, I feel like i don't i don't know because i wasn't around in the seven like a Not lot really, of the, a little bit i wasn't <laughs> sort of i wasn't at all i wasn't at all but i i, I i'm like i feel i listen to music from that those eras totally. so i'm like i can imagine there's sometimes i'll listen to specific upbeat 80s pop songs but like this is just this is cocaine this is drugs. Like, this is straight cocaine <laughs> yeah, yeah to the brain you if know? you watch like this Fleetwood <laughs> they Mac also talk about like videos. cocaine mixes oh man yeah i feel like cocaine <laughs> had an era uh definitely it might be having a new one now yeah for sure <laughs> for sure <laughs> a lot of people are doing it so yeah. it, might, it might be influencing hey, the it's music it's possible it way. actually never even stopped yeah, yeah that's yeah. true i feel like something happened in the 80s where I can just feel it. I don't know. I haven't done coke that much, but sometimes I'll listen. Oh yeah, like this no, it's is very clear. for sure. The energy. What's going on? Well, they say this like <laughs> I, you know I've read deeply about like Laurel Canyon in the '60s and then going into the '70s and Manson and all of that and basically like people were really open. Everyone was taking psychedelics. That was the thing. Come into my house, it's fine. And then that kind of turned. Charles Manson happened, people started being more paranoid and doing more cocaine, and then like that community completely changed, and it wasn't like open door Dang. policy anymore. It was like a totally different vibe. Yeah. And the yeah. music changed a What's lot. What's his face? What's the guitar player from the Eagles again? Famous guy? Glenn Fry? No, the other one. Oh, Joe Walsh. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that quote from him when he says uh, that he was like, yeah, it's funny, when I stopped doing cocaine, I just didn't need to own a gun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never heard Which that. Which is so terrifying. Fucking yeah, that is Fucking hopped terrifying. up people with yeah deadly Coke weapons guns. <laughs> but yeah yeah i mean i heard that the rolling stones when they tour i heard still to this day they have a crew like a fucking army like 
fully weaponed up. Who is this? Which band is The Stones. Oh, yeah. I mean. Like, they have an actual fleet of, like, army soldiers with fucking rifles and shit that just kind of trail behind them when they, as they drive. And that uh, worked so well for them last time, Just huh? kind of walk around. Like well, Altamont. They oh, love the Hells Angels well, now, or but whatever. Now they just have actual security firms that are, like, a little bit less rogue than having the Hells Angels <laughs> come out and do it. I mean, you need to have protection, I guess, I mean, if you have yeah, that I mean, much money. You have that probably, much money, people will want to yeah, kidnap sure. you and hold your ransom. Yeah, I mean, they got to be worried for their safety hold you totally. for ransom. I, I have friends who are obviously far less successful than the rolling stones who have really scary like stalker situations yeah that's real i've heard it's stories about you get like people being like kidnapped early on in their like like stardom and stuff like that where it, like nothing nobody that we know and also this is all hearsay <laughs> so i'm not gonna say any specific <laughs> names yeah. but i have heard these stories about like a weird transition of like when you're getting to be very big that you hit the place where you're like, oh, wait, I'm not actually safe to be just, like, fully... Out in the public. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, massive stardom. I don't think yeah, yeah, anybody yeah. I hang out with is, like, not at that Like level, Justin but. Bieber before he was... Yeah, yeah, I think, like, I think a band like that, it's, like, at that level of success has, to, like, a weird transition into being, like, oh, wait, I can't really just hang out because, like, yeah. it's a little bit dangerous. Now. Yeah, yeah. Those people, though, must somehow... I mean, this, like, massive stardom, like, it must tap into something... I don't know, just like people connect with those artists like so deeply. I don't know if it's the art. I don't know if it's the marketing. I don't know what it is, but I mean, it must be crazy to be someone where like everywhere you go, people recognize you and yeah. you go to, you play a show and th- you have thousands of screaming fans. Yeah. And a, yeah. It's a totally different thing. I think <laughs> if you just erode the best out of everybody, then you get the most fans. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I feel like a lot of those, maybe not, I feel like, artist big head type people there's just less and less of them right i, I feel like it's just everything is so even it's in less film, about art though like i mean th- now you have the kardashians or whatever yeah. like influence it's like it used to be like to become a celebrity i mean obviously there's always like models and beautiful people but like you have to like do something and now it's like all you have to do is just like exist in a yeah. way that gets you a lot of attention and that seems to work yeah that's i don't know i just yeah, that's strange to me. Yeah, all the celebrities pre like two thousand ten, eight. There's they did something great. I mean, you know, maybe not all. Or they maybe not all of them, but <laughs> they did something. Something maybe it wasn't great. Maybe it was so bad that yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Know, I mean, but at least they were like tied into an art form. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. They had to at least pretend they were an artist. Yeah, like at least there was like you were like there was cases of lip syncing and cases of like of like you know, Millie Vanillies or whatever, but they at least <laughs> pretended that they were like, it's like, yeah. yeah, no, we made this record. And then it's like, no, you didn't. But nowadays it's just like, I don't even have to pretend that I make anything. I'm just yeah. a good you looking don't, popular exactly. person. You don't have to make or yeah. do anything at yeah. all. There was a, I forget who it was, someone that played on Saturday Night Live or something. Sync, this was a while ago. And that was like, wasn't it? A, so much yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. Got so much shit for it. And Does now, anyone even care anymore? I don't know. No one cares. Yeah. It's a shit anymore. People lip sync no. all the time. People are playing with backing tracks. It doesn't matter anymore. That's how, you know. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it matters to people like us. Not to say, like, I'm judging people for lip syncing, but it's like, I still care about people p- picking up instruments and playing them. I don't know. Can't yeah. speak for anyone besides myself. I just I like know. being around that for my own personal reasons. So I just like being around people playing instruments. And the yeah, fact that, yeah. like, the only thing that makes tour, f- you asked if we like tour, if we like, you, how would our feelings are about tour? I kind of hate tour, except for the playing? 45 minutes on stage or whatever. That's always great. And then there's a little afterglow for, like, half an hour where you're like, man, everything's yeah. awesome. And then you're like... Okay, back to the next yeah, 24 sure. hours. Back of, to the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> to sleep for five hours and then drive for eight hours to do, do you, it all again. Do you have a band? <laughs> like for your live, I have a band, but it's not, I, I've never made a record with like a consistent band. My last two Got records it. that I've done with like Daptone, Wick have been uh, similar groups in the studio, but it, they're not the ones who I tour with. So, uh, and okay. I had a band that was relatively consistent for a while. I think we've all kind of parted ways, but even when it was relatively consistent, it was like a turnover. I guess yeah. it's project life of, of like, course. Yeah. You, you're you the one who's really dedicated to the end up and have more people come in and be more collaborative. But for whatever reason, every time I've tried to do that, I felt like the vision of the project got really foggy and I was like, I don't yeah. know what we're doing anymore. And yeah. so I'd go back to just like, it's not that I play everything on the, ins- on the uh, like every instrument all the time, although I have done that, but it's mostly planned out and arranged by yeah. me and then rotating cast of yeah. Got it. Are you, are you like playing or out or doing right. anything like in the 
near future or current? Uh, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff I don't think is announced. We got to up in the in the late summer. It's going to be kind of a return to winding up for the next record, uh, which will hopefully be in like the fall or something. It's like mostly tracked right now. Cool. So, yeah, but I've been mostly like, I mean, I kind of took some time off from the road, I guess, I, which it seems to be the way it, it has gone the last couple times. It might be something about the nature of being a solo artist as a like maybe if I had like three other, four other people who were all in the band to the same degree, we'd still be like taking shows in between mm -hmm. album cycles. But for me, it's often like things are done and I don't want to, I don't particularly, I only really like the lowest I like to do is like a duo because I like to play guitar so much that I feel like if you cut all the guitar solos and lead parts out of my songs and it's all only the rhythm guitar yeah, and just, singing, it just doesn't do thing. it. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I have to go through a lot of like hassle to get the like get players together who can then all play the songs again and then yeah. get out on the road. So it's like for me, I'm right now I'm kind of in between. But I'm gonna have some stuff in the summer. You. In the summer, I'm doing like one show in Canada, in Eastern Canada, in the in the spring or something, and then what something in the or in the U.S. again, and cool. the, that'll all be announced at some point in the yeah. next little while. Maybe the Canadian one's announced, but I just won't say anything in case I'm gonna step on their toes as yeah, far as their yeah, promotion yeah, yeah. goes. Do you find it? You play so I mean, is it hard to keep a solid band of people together all the time? I found it very difficult for the first three and a half years of this project, but I am incredibly blessed to have a very solid rhythm section. And I nice. made this record with them, and um, I have a rotating cast of guitar players that includes Michael and a couple other people that um, I would love to be more consistent. That's like the one role, yeah. like the lead stuff is. I'm finding harder to lock those people down. I have my when I can Got get it. them. You know, everyone. Has Which we're doing gigs. for this upcoming tour, or at least for a couple shows. We're about to do some dream team with Catfish nice. on pedal steel and me on lead, and then Brian and Dang, Dustin pedal on steel live section. So good. Well, and Very Catfish good. is like a killer. He's crazy. Yes, you, you know. Yeah, yeah, totally. He was just telling me about something. Yeah, I yeah. To get him on a song or something. He's I mean, insane. he's Catfish, right? He was like, "Yeah, Catfish plays." I was like, "Dude, with that name, you better be a." Badass fucking. It's There's funny. You can't be a cat. I mean, imagine being a catfish and being like not being able to play. There's you got to be able to shred. <laughs> you know I mean, you got to be like the in, guy. In the scene that we're in, there's two catfishes. One of them is based on the east side of the country. One of them is based on the west side of the country. Okay. I had the other, the east coast catfish player <laughs> in Daptown. And, and then and I'm I also worked on <laughs> and like played shows with that catfish. So. But it, yeah, it is funny that those guys, and they're both aware of each other, obviously, oh, really? at this point in time. Yeah. They both played on the new Black Lips record. Like, it's really? like, they're like in the same two catfishes. That's so funny. East Coast and West Coast, man. Yeah. That's I mean, hilarious. actually, East Coast Catfish messaged me a happy birthday, and I didn't have his number on my phone yet, like the other day. And I was like, oh, wait, who is this? And he was like, East Coast Catfish. <laughs> so <laughs> they're, they're aware. Yeah. I love it. That's so funny. It's really fucking funny, man. Cat, there's another guy, too, that played getting <laughs> i feel like it's always the instruments that not a lot of people play exactly they get the weird nicknames. they get the weird nickname i wish i had a weird nickname i know me too i don't, I don't have any good yeah. ones i don't have any of that <laughs> <laughs> we're so normal with our normal names yeah. do you ever wish you were you had a different name live like there's i feel like as I, i've done i don't play anymore but i was played for a while it's just my name mm -hmm. and it always fucking stressed me out because it's like your name. And yeah, I mean, there's a lot more pressure that, on you to be the band leader when it's your name. And also there's a thing where it's like, you can't ever get, a, like you're always gonna be that person. Although yeah. at the same time, it's also like at a certain point realistically, not that I feel like disassociated with my identity as being who I am, but like I, the name as associated with the way things work. like. That is associated with the style of music. This mm. is like, and I, it is something that is like very close to my heart. It's not like I'm doing it just because I thought it was going to be beneficial for some reason. Like it is true to me, but at the same time, if I started another project, I would just change the name. Yeah. And, it, and then it would be that like Michael Ralt is the name of this project. As much Got as it's it. also my name. Got it's like it. uh, from it in that sense. It definitely becomes That's a good way to look at it. an idea of you, especially when you have a label and a manager and all these other people that are associated it's like there's pearl charles the person and then there's pearl charles the artist and uh, another ram das this is less of a quote and more just like of a thing where it's like you 
you aren't your name, like your identity, your soul, whoever you are, like inside, like eventually that name of this human, but like stripped away. So it's kind of like, it is innately your truest at the same time. It's something that exists outside of you that is like a commodity to be yeah. sold. Well, you sign marketed. contracts. Like I can't play under Michael Ralt on a different label and sing on it. Like it's like, so it's like, yeah, like it's totally its own thing. Yeah, it's, it's like not, this is like a totally yeah, outside it's not even of a personal thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just maybe on two cents. I could never break that barrier of making it not personal. I couldn't. I always, I, mean, I try is. and think that, but then it's like when you have a really shitty show. Yeah, and you're in the car <laughs> driving here, like you're like Wyatt Blair. <laughs> last night, I mean it's true. And then there's you, no and way it's to get just like that. there's no. I wish it was like the Ding Dongs, like were had a horrible set, but it's like my fucking name, and then it's just, and then I feel all like it's bad. And I oh, mean I the only, bad. the only thing that I've done Fuck. to like overcome that is to like, I feel like probably professional athletes have to get to this place too to like enjoy their life. Like you have a bad show and you're just like, I'm just more kind of like a. A lot of people probably don't know. And then I said to be like a healthy amount of like, man, I got to do better than that next time. But then I'm yeah, also like, yeah. have to like, then also be like, and paying att enough attention to know that I totally didn't play as well as I can play. Then <laughs> yeah. I apologize to you. And I'm trying my best to play as best as I can all the time. An yeah. issue that I have that maybe you guys have been lucky enough to not experience is just getting people like hating on you for who you are outside of your music when they like watch your video and then they comment on YouTube like this girl seems like a total That's narcissistic worse. Worse blah, blah 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 mm. and they're just and I'm just like god like you're making like personal when it gets personal it's like yeah. okay it's one thing you say I don't like this music but when you start making personal judgments about me it's like you don't even know me there's way more hate yeah. I think on girls oh yeah regard. that's gotta be can a be whole different sometimes. dimension of I try not to take shit. it too personally like you say because I'm like I have to be comfortable enough in myself to know my own truth and my own honesty and i'm like yeah. i know who i am and i feel comfortable I'm not gonna someone said like well if she's such a big girl she can take these comments and i was like <laughs> okay you know what fine say whatever you want about me i but, know yeah. that i'm in this for the right reason so yeah i don't think yeah. anybody's ever said that kind of stuff about me and all the years of playing music i feel like it's been more kind of like you either like or hate my music but like yeah, it's like that guy. I hate that guy. I mean, I mean, yeah. maybe I just haven't gotten popular enough for people to feel that way. But like, I think it maybe happens faster sometimes for girls. I don't know why. Oh, That's for sure, dude. Well, for yeah, sure. on appearance or like for sure things like. So I mean, I feel silly even repeating this stuff. But they're like, she thinks she's so hot or whatever, and I was like, well, you have no idea about my personal insecurities. Yeah, but yeah. whatever, say yeah. whatever you want. <laughs> I think a lot of times, though, people that comment like that is really they're just projecting their own issues. A hundred percent. You know. Oh, yeah, you can't right. take it. You're I mean, right. also, who you even know? has the time to be like criticizing people on the internet? That's what I'm saying. It's, it's I don't know. There, I've actually had those experiences myself. Not so much on appearance. Two albums I put out were specifically supposed to be funny, like comedic albums they weren't serious at all and I didn't understand that and they just thought it was like people would be like this is i don't get this, this is horrible <laughs> why would anybody listen to this this is bullshit and i was like well it's supposed to be fun. it's not supposed to be serious like it's not supposed to be like the best album you've ever heard it's supposed to just be like a funny you know enjoyable thing laugh and yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? And so it's like that that made me feel like put that I'm, that must have not come across properly. I mean to those few people. Yeah. yeah. I mean you can't win them all. Yeah. That's it's what I it's, always say. I can't Oh man, that's got to be fucking rough though. I can't I feel like women have a whole different dimension of shit. Oh yeah. You got to have a thick skin, man. I oh, mean being fuck. in the public eye to any degree and like we've all chosen on some small we're all hoping to grow to a larger scale that that's part of the deal. It's yeah. too bad that people, you know, need to cut other people down because they're unhappy with their yeah. own lives or whatever they're doing. But the more secure you get in yourself, the less those things bother you. But yeah, of course true. they bother you every time. And maybe hopefully you're spreading that kind of vibe of secure energy to people. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, hopefully. No, I've said that before. I'm like, I can't really see why you're hating on me other than the, like I'm trying to live my life in the way that feels most authentic to me and I'm pretty happy so like if that's what's coming off that it's making you uncomfortable then you should examine that within yourself yeah like maybe you exactly you know well also be like, comfortable in your own skin you 
like I don't know who these anonymous people who are commenting like hate or comments, but like I'm like if you want to go put out your own music and put it out there, then like do I guess it. open exactly open yourself up to that kind of criticism in return. Yeah, I would never do that, so I just I guess I can't really understand. And then we can the just both privately mindset. dislike each other, dissing <laughs> each other on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It always hurts more though when someone's criticizing your very on a serious level, like on a, where you're, where you're even digesting it, like, wow, maybe he's right. You know? I mean, they can like, get to you like the that production sometimes. is shit. And why did they add this? And there's too many of this. And why I'm like, wow, maybe they're right. Maybe it was, I also do feel like, I mean, I don't like reading criticism and reviews or whatever. Like it's, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone really loves to be told that they didn't, someone didn't like what they're doing in a certain way. Yeah. But I do notice when someone says something that I'm like, I was thinking about that. <laughs> when yeah, we, master, I was right? like, like, is fuck, it a little bit is... too much of this? And then they're like, like this thing's a little bit too much like this. And I'm like, right. Well, you're kind of right about that. Yeah, I think so I felt about well, it a little bit. Maybe that know. guitar solo should have been cut in half. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At that point, you just got to give it up. Yeah. You're yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> I'm the same. I feel like the real critics will sh- say shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like for sure. They'll be so, they'll, they listen so closely where, and I kind of like that criticism, but it's all, it's just a different, I don't feel as attacked. I feel more like, fuck, maybe I should have done that. Yeah. Well, you just but think that they're right. So I, I just like, think oh, like, I'm like well, I already <laughs> made that in my, like, you know, I've already made a mental note of being like, next record, I think I'm going to try these things a little different. Some of those decisions I was making were not exactly where I wanted to go. Yeah. And then a reviewer says it and you're like, I know, buddy, I already got that yeah, written yeah. down in my notebook. <laughs> yeah. We're on the same page. Well, I was yeah. saying to you yesterday about a review of a song on my last record where they specifically called that out and it was the one where I was like, oh, this might be interpreted by some people as being cheesy, but I'm totally going exactly for this. And then they're like, this song's really cheesy. And I was like, well, the thing is like, you're right. I was a little nervous that people were going to say that. And I knew that it was, I was pushing it in that direction, but ultimately that's what I wanted to do. So either you get it and you like it or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Like you could say deny that, but I personally am a fan of the cheese. Yeah. Me too. (laughs) I love cheesy shit. (laughs) I mean, the Eagles are one of my favorite bands. Oh, yeah. No denying it. So good. More I, and more a fan. <laughs> do you, uh, I make this reference and it pisses, are, are you a big Pink Floyd fan? Not Either. like. I'm, I'm not deep enough. I like some stuff, but like I'm one of the, like, knows every song Got off it. every okay. record. I always, <laughs> I always say that Dark Side of the Moon is like if the Eagles tried to make a psychedelic album. Oh, I mean, well, I personally really like that record, Pink, so that Pink might Floyd, be why. Pink <laughs> Floyd, they fucking hate their lost friends because of saying shit like because that. Because they think that you're crediting Pink Floyd by comparing them to the Yeah. Eagles. I'm I saying, mean, no, it's the a Eagles good thing. The Eagles' musicianship and like, ability to craft pop music is undeniable. So like, if you yeah. don't like that, that's fine. But like, there's nothing wrong with it. And yeah. Pink Floyd obviously yeah. has a side of them that is on that level of, they like, I mean, that record is band. so pop. Like, it's, it's so, so pop, pop, but it's also goes so far out. Like, yeah. Also one time, it's, it's like, another yeah. trippy experience I had was sitting in the desert another time on mushrooms and having like, cause I feel like sometimes when you're writing songs, it comes to you. And I think every artist has experienced this. It comes from a place that's outside of you. It's yeah. beamed into your brain and all of a sudden it's there. And I was sitting there and I was like, God, I have this song in my head. And it was dark side of the moon, but it was like not coming from my conscious brain. It was coming from the universe. And I was like, Holy shit. I feel this connection of like, I get why they wrote this song. They were like this in the world that needs to like exist. And they plucked it out and they put Holy it out. Fuck. Cool. Well, I mean, sometimes like, especially on certain drugs and stuff, but sometimes even sober, I feel like I'm listening to like a radio inside of my head. Like, will really hear this song. And it's yeah. like, maybe a song that exists and I heard before, sometimes that, or sometimes it's something that I'm just listening to it. I'm like, and it's not even the way that I write songs. Because like I feel like listening would be really hard to capture exactly yeah. the vibe of it, so I'm yeah. just like I'm just gonna check out this idea that I have. I'm not gonna try to chase it. I'm able to grab it. Yeah, but. totally. Do you got? Do you, do you guys find yourself more attracted to the actual process of creating, like in, in a studio, performing? I like, or, to, or is it both is it equal thing? You go first if you want. Um. Well. I definitely like got my performing. So I always thought I was more comfortable with that, but ultimately like the high that you get from creating something new in the studio and like completing a song. Any point, whether when you're just 
uh, on the acoustic or piano and like the voice phase and then like the phase of actually producing it and turning it into a real song like every single time you hit a milestone high yeah so that's really the excitement of creation of something new i think it's like a because i also like i love performing and i do get a big high out of that too but it's a different kind of like realization yeah I think my been good, and I think like it's been fun to play live. Like I, I'm not discounting that side of my existence as an artist, but I do feel like more of a studio guy, yeah. and I just love the feeling of like being in a place that sounds right. Like yeah. like the the you know the room's treated or whatever, the speakers are set up nicely. Then yeah. you dial in a sound in a place where you're feeling you what it sounds what like, it's supposed to sound like, and then yeah. you're like on the exact same page as like what people are gonna. I mean, you know, I guess it's not always the same in different setups when they're listening to the record later on and everything. But for the most part, you're like, this is how this sounds. And you're able to, yeah, I wasn't actually playing that that well and then get it a little bit better and mm -hmm. like be like, I'm a little ahead and I'm gonna pull it back or something. I like that element because I just feel like it's very like, it's like a real place where you're really actually making something yeah. tangible and like able to like improve and hear what you're doing that yeah, you don't like sure. and get to a cool place. But live is like, you know, live is a really good live show to a crowd of people that is really responsive in a nice sounding room or whatever, where you're like actually hearing things well on stage, which is so few and far between. But when you get to do that, when you're yeah, actually connected to it in the right way, it's like, I don't think anything beats that. So it's like creating something in the studio is like the ultimate realization of the song. And then every single night you're playing it live with obviously like less people and different instrumentation because it's almost impossible yeah, yeah, to recreate that, depending on what kind of records you make. But like my records are pretty like, lush and have like you got many like a six layers piece piano player and yeah exactly player. and like you know like yeah. all these instruments for my like records i need like four guitar players in a string yes. section it's just like not usually <laughs> not gonna, gonna happen yeah. so it's a completely different execution of your art it's yeah. like making it the best it can be on stage every night is like using what you have whereas like like you know what is actually like available to you live whereas like in the studio it's like you have multi-tracking and you have different days and different people coming in and out and it's a yeah. whole other thing but you can make the song exactly what you envision in your head yeah i always view like brooks making a film mm. and playing live like going a broadway play yeah yeah you know exactly I mean? where they're both fun but i feel like some people are more attracted to one than the other Live, you have to use your imagination a little bit more. Like you're For like, sure. it's just a really minimal set, but they're supposed to be on the Golden Gate Bridge or whatever. Yeah, Whereas like yeah. in the movie, it's like massive shot coming down <laughs> the know, helicopter right? of everybody on the bridge. Yeah, yeah, I feel, <clears throat> I feel the same way. Uh, I think I'm more. Well, I know for a fact I'm way more into studio work than I am playing. You so. get to be more imaginative. There's more. You're able to yeah. be like, do we want it like this? Do <laughs> we want it like this? And you can really imagine a whole different universe. Yeah. Whereas no matter how good your band is or how much gear you have, you're still going to be somewhat, I mean, I guess it becomes, if you get really huge. In the exact same way, because like he's making his record mostly to tape and, and I more, did not. And more live. The yeah. His record's like a little more together. live. Oh, okay. I mean, I'd say my, we do bass and drums live, but like there's a lot. I think we do quite a bit more overdubbing than you guys do. And um, so you kind of get to pick your takes and then we we kind of like frankenstein yeah, yeah, yeah. pieces together <laughs> yeah which is you know i think that's pretty normal in modern recording but i'm kind of it's a like, dinosaur in a weird way i'm a dinosaur but it is a little bit more old-fashioned i guess every time you perform yeah. though it's like it's gonna be one vocal <clears throat> take the whole way through <laughs> you're not like comping that is something that's just like it won't be exactly perfect because no one's perfect yeah there's a beauty to that for sure I mean, I wish there was more imperfection on modern recordings. Me as too. much as I like having the control to be able to guide it closer to what my ultimate vision was, I also have a, more of a taste for more yeah. <clears throat> idiosyncratic personal moments. Whereas like my biggest complaint when I listen to a lot of stuff that's popular nowadays is just that I'm just like, that's like not a human voice. Like I'm like, that is so yeah. obviously auto-tuned, even when it's not a stylistic yeah, auto-tuned. Everything's auto quantized. quantized. Yeah. Everything's compressed to the point that there's no... Uh, variation and dynamic and yeah. I'm just like this just doesn't sound like a band I mean that's fine and I, I like a lot of these records I'm not talking about electronic records I'm talking about our yeah, arrangement yeah, and sure. I'm just like this is like I wish it was just a little bit a little more human yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing it's like we my band uses all these modern recording techniques and we do you know edit and stuff but ultimately like I still want my music to sound like a band play yeah well and Lewis yeah. definitely has a viewpoint of being like no that was like that's good. You part in one of the songs. It's like a 
just piano, bass, and vocals on this record, uh, on this one song. And it was in the strings, though, wasn't it? Are you talking? Sh- no, 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 okay. no strings. And um, there are strings on a different song. Mm. But at the beginning of the song, you can hear the bass player move in his chair. And I was like, oh, that movement in the chair. Like, I just can't stand that. And he's like, no, that's good. I mean, it's, it's people playing it's a room of yeah. people. <laughs> also, another thing was when you guys did the strings, there w- they decided there was like one out of tune. And Lewis said the thing about that Japanese concept. What is it called? Oh, um, wabi sabi. Wabi sabi. The inherent. That's what makes the. Makes Every, it. I mean, I, they like, make I, a perfect. Do you know about this? It's like someone will make a perfect like vase, and then they'll just like do something crazy at the end where it's like it has like a crack in it or has like a imperfection because they're like everything is imperfect. So you might as well just embrace yeah, it and like okay. put it in there instead of trying. Place in Edmonton called Fort Edmonton. That's like old timey amusement park sort of it's like supposed to be like the original fort that was on the western plains in edmonton but they had like a park that was a native american part and there was all these like native american people dressed up and very traditionally in a teepee and everything and they were doing indigenous canadian people yes (laughs) (laughs) i said native american right yeah yeah oh i guess you're still live in america yeah yeah uh native north North americans Americans. yeah yeah (laughs) anyways and they were doing a but they're doing this bead bead work, like traditional bead work, and I remember them pointing out to me. I was really little that they were like, "See, there's always a flaw in one of these. It's all. It's just the way it is. You'll never make one that didn't have a flaw." Yeah. And I remember being like, "This is a, definitely a precursor to the me as a perfectionist making records." I remember not when they told me that was. I was like, "Does it actually have to be? Maybe if you just go a little bit harder, <laughs> you could really get <laughs> yeah, it perfect." Yeah, yeah. And I think that over my life, I've been I've re- realized that that's 100 true. That there's was always your, that was be like that. your Mr. Miyagi moment. It, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I, you can make things with no flaws, and that's what all of modern pop music yeah, is. True. And it's just perfect, and you're like, this is soulless and feels but like it's a robot made artificially it. <laughs> created. Yeah. It's not, yeah. which is fine. Again, I'm not trying to be like a snob. You can make records any way you want. I'm just saying that, like, I don't yeah, love the, that Yeah, it's a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, does to me. I'm the, I feel the same way. I feel like a lot of the like, sounds like computers arguing with each other, like, <laughs> you know, like there's angry computers yelling at each other in a conference room. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And it just doesn't feel... I want to hear real people arguing with each other <laughs> in a conference room. You, I want them to be. That's real the people. shit I want to hear. Yeah. yeah, totally. I also just want to like, I don't know. <clears throat> it's just like so like loud too. Like the drums are so loud and uh, like it's just everything's just like so like yeah. it's really bombastic and it's supposed to sound yeah. really good on a phone speaker. That's, well, that's just, like that's a lot of what it is. Mm-hmm. Someone told me like a, two years ago that if you can't hear the kick drum like, very clearly on a phone, then the mix isn't going to be massively isn't, isn't, successful is it going to be yeah is, is it going to yeah. is it going to pop like yeah, is it yeah. Gonna, i mean so, yeah but that's like but then when you listen to that know. on good speakers <laughs> when you listen to that on good speakers it's such a it sounds like a click pure click, click. like it's such a like a uh, inferior sounding thing compared to a record that was made with these subtleties just for like going on when you actually listen to it clearly for but sure. no that even me not that often i don't know it's yeah. like it is kind of tough but i'm still trying to make records that sound really good yeah to my standard although yeah. it's not the standard of the way i feel like the standards are changing i feel like more and more people f- i feel like most people feel like a lot of the music is, i call it ikea like you're looking at cushions and rugs Didn't and shit you say that like, that's what they called ikea it's like kmart. ikea um, oh yeah yeah the daptone guys have a thing for bad drum sounds i think they call it like i think it's kmart drum sounds yeah I'll Go drums. There you go. And there it's like go. when it's like a really typically well engineered drum sound from like sort of like the late nineties, early two thousands yeah. with like a really ringy snare and just like yeah, everything's yeah. just like really close mic. And they're like, Yeah, if you they're like, Yeah, the drum sounds a little bit a little Costco right now. Yeah. Di- yeah. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a l- I don't know. I'm hoping I think there'll be less and less of that. Things will change and morph into other shit. There's definitely like enough people in the world for our kind of people who aren't doing that to do our own thing. And I don't know, I can't speak to whether or not that's going to break through to the mainstream yeah. or come back. I mean, break through. It's like, it's already been there. Yeah. You don't need, yeah, but be you more also just don't need to. You just need to, like I was saying the other day that it's like, if uh, like, say like people, and this is accurate or whatever, let's say like, I know like a hundred people or something that I feel relatively like close to or something. Maybe it's more, maybe it's less. I don't know. Then you're like, Oh, there's like 20 people I know in that, of those people that like I really connect to on music like they're my and those would be my closest friends too because that's such a big part of my life but then I'm like so of the bigger web of people that I know if 
I know this percentage of if it's 20 to 100, which is totally off the top of my head and probably not right. But like, so like, say it's like 20%. <laughs> yeah. But then you're like, if, so I mean, if you can reach the 20% of the population that is great, like you're going to be, yeah. you're, you got a life, you're great. I mean, it's hard to get that to happen, but yeah. Yeah. it isn't, doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to be that you're like, I need to reach. 85 of like and I think a lot of the stuff we're talking about where it's like it should has to sound exactly like this is like the mindset of being like I'm yeah. trying to hit 95% of the population's like sure. tastes or whatever and you're like I mean that's just not going to be me ever I don't For think sure. how does it sound on the phone yeah yeah Can I <laughs> it's like I was trying for something that was like a vision aside from whether or not the kick drum was audible on the phone yeah. <laughs> like Dude, believe it or not I was thinking do, about man. different things it's hard to get a I kick drum the cell I phone the, speaker yeah I doubt I have the I EQ mean they don't have any low end yeah, it's yeah, mostly it's the clean sound. Some, <laughs> some hard shit to do. When that guy told me that, that's been stuck in my fucking... You know, actually, who told me that was... Who the fuck was it? Do you know Bobby Harlow? I do the, know the band The Go. And he's, he produces a lot of people, right? Yeah. Did he produce, like... Did he produce, like, King Tough or something like that? Or yeah, 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 yeah. All the King Tough stuff. The, the earlier stuff. Not yeah, the, yeah, I happened to be in his studio ago, and he was a kick drum, and he was spending... I'm just isolating the kick drum. It, it was that long. It was like an hour. Like, oh poof, god! Poof, and just like EQing shit, throwing shit. I was like, "What are you doing?" It's like the kick drum's the most important part of every song. You got to hear it on the phone. Every if you can't, song if you can't, ever made. If you can't hear it on the <laughs> phone, then like, you know, it's, that's the centerpiece of every mix. Like, I mean, I guess if was, that's like, like what we're judging stuff of perspective. Off of, but it. like, I don't know. Change like, my whole perspective. I listen to the music that I love. I mean, and it doesn't always sound like that. So that's the thing. I mean, maybe yeah. that's what needs to happen. Like, that's your recipe for success. But then again, that's what I'm saying. Like, there is no recipe yeah. for success. So, I just, like, that's I'm just one now, perspective. I want to go listen to some of my favorite drum sounds on my phone after this and see how many yeah. of them the kick drums there. Because it, it might be a cool thing. Like, I actually think I can think of, I'm imagining certain songs that I love that I prop the kick drum sounds I would like. And I think it might actually be really yeah, audible. Yeah, dude, it's a weird fucking thing that's been, and he said that. And I'll listen back to mix, like mixes that I'm working on and random shit and be like, yeah, that kick drum sounds bomb on a cell phone. And I don't know why I say that. And there's can't hear it so much, but it's in the car. Exactly. Or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't really matter. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's fucking crazy. Kick drum on the cell phone. <laughs> it is a wild world. Uh, I always kind of end. Lollipop, lollipop, oh, lollipop, 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 l